Good morning everyone! On this blessed morning I chose to make an epoxy board. I had a lot of gorgeous cherry and spalted maple off cuts lying around and I couldn't bring myself to throw it out. So I chose to make an epoxy board out of it. As the first step I look at the pieces and chose the best corner I will use for the board's corner. Then I use jigsaw to give the shape to the off cuts and cut cracked and bad pieces of the wood off. It was starting to look pretty cool. I used the belt sander to give nice rounded smooth and fancy waves to the offcuts, but I ended up with a giant gap in the middle since I only used the leftover good pieces from the offcut itself. Luckily I had 4 tinier pieces of spalted maple that I could use as small stones for the middle. And that's what I did. I used those 4 tiny offcuts to shape them into round balls on the sander. I know they were not perfectly round, but I kinda liked how it looked. Now. All my pieces were ready. I kept debating whether I should use cherry or maple for those stones, but as you see from here, maple just looks superior in this case. Not to mention those wavy patterns did fit into the theme pretty well. Now that the pieces were set, it was time to prepare epoxy. For the bottom layer, I chose very dark blue color like the deep sea should be. Added a pinch of green in there in order to have it shine when the light hits it. It will give it a nice abyssal color. For the middle layer I chose murky blue color. This will serve as a nice transition from dark blue to light blue, not to mention I really wanted to see what this color looks like under the light. Next layer it was light blue with a pinch of pearl luster to give it a nice swirl in order to imitate streams. And for the top layer it was a mix of white and bright blue to give it a feeling of sea foam floating. To be honest the top layer didn't quite work out as well as I expected it to, but it still looks cool. And now it was time to pour everything. I secured 4 pieces I cut to the corners and let the stone pieces be in the middle. As soon as I poured the bottom layer I saw the stones float up. After all, wood is less dense than epoxy, although it is stronger than epoxy. So I let the bottom layer harden a little bit, create a, a nice swirls and let it dry some more. Once it was ready I poured the middle layer. For the middle layer I let it almost completely harden since I was afraid stones would continue floating up. And then I poured the top two layers almost immediately one after another. I think if I waited a bit before pouring the top layer I would have gotten a better effect but overall it still looked pretty cool. I let the whole thing sit for a week just to be sure it was ready. So after two weeks total of me messing with epoxy I just smashed it out. First I removed the small HDP clamping blocks then hammered the edges off and with a quick flip I smashed the bottom as hard as I could and the board just popped right out. One thing I learned is that the walls have to be first loosened before you can smash it from the bottom otherwise it won't pop out of the mold as easily. And now it was time to plane the whole thing to get rid of imperfections. My poor planer absolutely hates epoxy. If you ever want to make epoxy boards do not get the wild planer that you see me have here. Avoid it at all costs. I love my planer and it is absolutely amazing when it comes to planing wood. But the built-in fan to remove debris inside the planer can't always handle epoxy shavings too well. It tends to get clogged up and then that in turn clogs up the blades. And then the whole cleanup becomes a colossal nightmare where you have to take the whole planer apart to get in there and remove all that sticky epoxy. Not to mention if you keep passing epoxy, blades heat up due to repeated impact and then those same heated blades tend to melt epoxy shavings if they do get stuck in there due to the fan being clogged. So you end up with a very bad time of scraping melted epoxy off of the blades. I do not know if it is only my planer that does this or if others experience it too, but if I could probably, I would probably trade my planer for something else as long as it was as wide as this DeWalt planer that I have here. If you have made an epoxy board, do let me know your experience with the planers. I'm curious to know if I'm the only one or it happens, it's like a normal occurrence with all the other planers. Anyway, now that the board was nice and smooth looking on top and bottom, it was time to saw the edges off. As a fun tip, you can use those edges as very nice rulers. They are very bendy but do tend to hold their shape and serve as nice rulers or bookmarks. Also I used fancy camera work here, did you like it? Before I move on to doing any more work, I quickly use sander at 80 grit to sand off any gunk and imperfections. Using table saw and planer do tend to leave marks on the epoxy, so you want to sand those out very gently earlier so that later on when you give it a shape it's not as difficult to sand out those imperfections. 
Now that everything looks ready, it is time to give this board nice shape so that it can be worthy of being in a kitchen or someone's dining table. For the bottom, I use Roman OG bit. I notice people are usually fans of it because it allows them to grab the piece from the bottom comfortably. Even if you have something heavy or liquid on top of the board, Roman OG bit does give your fingers good gripping surface in order to lift and move the board over. For the top, I used round over bit. I kind of went deep there like I did with my walnut board I made. I probably should have been more careful with it, but after looking at it carefully, I actually liked how it turned out. You will see in the finished picture, it gives the whole board a very good geometry. With the board shape ready, it was time for my favorite activity, sanding. I started at 80 grit and sanded this whole thing all the way to 2000 grit. I have noticed that with epoxy one needs a lot more sanding in order to make sure to bring out that shine and whatever's inside the epoxy itself. Wood looks pretty good at 800 grit, but with epoxy you need to go to 2000 grit or epoxy will end up looking cloudy. After each grid, do make sure to wipe the board thoroughly with a paper towel so that you can remove any leftover stuck epoxy dust. I do love sanding, but when it comes to epoxy, sanding just doesn't feel as good. When I sand wood, I pay attention to it and try to see its story. When I sand epoxy, I'm sanding a piece of plastic that never lift. The experience is completely different and not too enjoyable. Not to mention sandpaper becomes useless quicker when sanding epoxy versus wood. So pretty much after I'm done I throw out the disc. With wood it can last about 4-5 to five sandings. Still allowed me to get into a flow state however, so you know, I guess it counts somewhat. Now that I hit 2000 grit it is time to oil it. Since it is epoxy I only ended up applying one layer of oil per side. The pores on the wood were sealed by epoxy and me sanding it to 2000 grit. And epoxy doesn't really drink oil anyway, so even that one layer didn't fully get absorbed. But the colors of epoxy really popped out as soon as I applied some oil. I was excited to see the final result. But before that I just had to take one last step and wax everything. Oil might not be absorbed by epoxy, but wax can and will bond with epoxy and wood quite well, so I took my sweet time to make as much friction as possible and slowly melt wax to bond with the board. And that's it, the board was ready, it looked quite stunning, and for the first time I could argue that there isn't much I could have improved on. Maybe I could have added one or two more stone looking pieces of the wood. Maybe I could have waited a little bit longer before pouring top layer, but that's not really improvement choice, but rather design ones. Let me know what you think of this board and what you think I could have done differently. I would love to know and I'll try to do it next time. If you enjoyed what you saw as much as I enjoyed making it, please consider subscribing and maybe giving me a like. I try to release video every single week. If you have something to say, please leave a comment or just say hi, I promise to say hi back. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye bye!